I'm Walter Cronkite. This is the story of Mustafa Kemal Ataturk, the strong man who, in a little more than a decade, led Turkey out of the Middle Ages and into the 20th century. The story, The Incredible Turk, as the Prudential Insurance Company of America presents the 20th century. <laughs> In the Middle East today, chaotic, vulnerable to Soviet expansion, Turkey, modern, powerful, and a rarity in this area, pro-Western, is prepared to defend herself against any aggressor. This is the border between Russia and Turkey, guarded day and night. The Red Sentry does not know he is being photographed from across this border. He feels that he is being watched. He is also suspiciously watchful. Today, Turkish cavalry defends the broken, desolate terrain at the edge of Asia Minor. These cavalry squadrons are part of the strongest fighting force in the Middle East, the Army of Turkey, a democratic-minded member of NATO, military partner of the United States. Modern Turkey, strong and stable, was created out of a dying oriental despotism by one man, unique in history, Mustafa Kemal, called Ataturk, father of the Turks. In a moment, this story, The Incredible Turk. By 1900, the Ottoman Empire, land of many races and religions, has lost her ancient tolerances and her world position, is reduced from medieval splendor to medieval squalor. Ruled by inept autocrats, ruined by foreign wars and exploited by foreigners, the people are sunk in poverty, lost in lethargy, mostly illiterate. The Turkish Empire continues to exist only because the European nations cannot agree among themselves to dismember her. Before World War I, Germany has plans to embrace Turkey as an ally, then to subjugate her as a satellite. To visit the sick man of Europe, as Turkey is called, comes the German emperor himself, Kaiser Wilhelm II. He is received with more than ceremony. His glowing promises, such as the Berlin to Baghdad Railroad, are believed by the Sultan and his government, and even by the nationalist-minded young Turks. When war comes, Turkey will waver between her old friend Britain, allied with her hereditary enemy Russia, and her new friend Germany. On October 29, 1914, Turkey takes into war, on the Kaiser's side, her obsolescent army. February 1915, the British plan to force the Dardanelles past Gallipoli, take Constantinople, and free Russian shipping in one naval campaign. Mustafa Kemal is an unknown officer commanding a feeble Turkish division at Gallipoli. His brilliant strategy and ferocious personal leadership changed the course of the battle, the campaign, and the war. Ten months, the British signal defeat and steam away, leaving on the historic shore of the Hellespont a new hero in Turkey. One victory, one great military commander are not enough. The defeat of the Central Powers by the Allies brings the end of the old Ottoman Empire. It is carved away, leaving only Turkey proper, a much smaller and more homogeneous land which, with leadership, may become a nation. 
November 1918, the ships of the victors crowd the harbor at Constantinople after World War I. From the palace of a weak and corrupt sultan, there comes no opposition. Turks bowing to Mecca accept their fate. From France and from Great Britain, occupation troops disembark to take over the ancient capital. Sure that the Allied armies in Constantinople will do nothing to prevent it, Greece is preparing for an invasion of Turkey. On May 15, 1919, the Greeks land their troops. In Ankara, in the heart of Turkey, Mustafa Kemal organizes the Turkish liberation movement, takes command of the free Turkish army. From far off Constantinople, the Sultan repudiates him. But Mustafa grimly swears that he will gain Turkey's freedom or die. No other general equals this man, and the Turkish soldiers need only to be led to fight. They are traditionally warriors. Quickly, Mustafa Kemal gathers the forces of unoccupied Turkey under his almost unchallenged domination. His hastily recruited bodyguards stand ready to defend him with their lives. Mustafa Kemal pits his cold, inexhaustible toughness, his unyielding determination, his knowledge that the people are with him, against the continued fanatic opposition of the Sultan's government. Ammunition must be made by hand by old men and hungry workmen, boys and children. Mustafa Kemal's Turkey is going into battle with the Greeks. The war with the Greeks lasts three years, from 1919 to 1922. The Turkish people know it is a war of extermination, atrocious, no quarter given or asked. Heroically led, the Turks advance against the invaders. The women leave their endangered homes to carry shells to the army. September 1922, the Greeks are driven back to the Aegean Sea. Offshore, Allied rescue ships stand by. Into the seaport of Smyrna, called Izmir by the Turks, poor thousands of Greeks, joined by sympathetic Christian minorities, fleeing before the armies of the man whom the British call the most terrible of all the terrible Turks. From the ships, bread comes to the docks for the desperate refugees. Bread so that they may live another day. September 9, 1922, the Turks enter Smyrna, last stronghold of the invaders. They take vengeance against the Greeks for whole Turkish villages wiped out for their kinsmen massacred. The burning of Smyrna, the final atrocity that both the Greeks and the Turks disavow, ends a war that has become an unendurable nightmare for both sides. Its polyglot population takes to the sea as the flames destroy the great Homeric city. Star and Crescent fly over liberated Turkey. Mustafa Kemal Pasha, married to a woman of Smyrna who personifies his ideal of Western freedom for all Turkish women, 
is chief of state and supreme commander of the army. With the winning of the war, he removes his uniform, never to wear it again. He is now granted dictatorial powers by the elected National Assembly. In Constantinople, to be officially renamed Istanbul, the foreign occupation troops are evacuated. In the fall of 1922, Sultan Mohammed VI, whose family has reigned for seven centuries, fears for his life and goes into exile as crowds cheer his going. Mustafa Kemal's victorious army enters Istanbul. First president of the first Turkish Republic, Mustafa Kemal during the 1920s keeps his limitless wartime powers and his command of the army, makes the hard dry town of Ankara his capital. His fantastic dream is not of empire or conquest, but of creating a democratic Turkey, a new kind of Turk in his lifetime. 